So, in recent videos, we were looking at the voltage drop of an LED. So there's a space between this resistor and the negative rail. I'm going to put the long lead, the anode, to the resistor, short lead, the cathode, to the uh, jumper there. And we can look at how much voltage it is blocking. So we have 5 volts at uh, the rail here. That's what the uh, power supply is set to. And we can see that the LED has almost 2 volts across it. We'll say 1.9 volts. So the rest of the voltage, about 3 volts, is across the uh, resistor here. And it's setting the current. It's a 1 kilo ohm resistor. So when we measure the current, we looked at this in the last video, we had 3 milliamps of current going through it. This is a 3000 ohm resistor. So we have about a third of the current. And so across the LED, you can see it's about 0.1 volt left. So we have more resistance, less current, so a little less voltage is building up across the LED. But uh, for the most part, it is about the same. If I can get a connection, there we go. And uh, I was pushing on parts of the board that weren't part of the wire there. But in any case, as current goes down, the voltage goes down a little bit, but for the most part, it blocks about a certain amount of voltage. So we looked at the red LED and we also looked at the green LED. So this is kind of it's kind of the best way to test out the voltage drop. The green LED is just naturally brighter plus this might be a worn out uh, LED. It actually has less current. You can see it's blocking more voltage so almost 2.6 volts and then so about half the voltage a little bit more than half and so we'll have a little less than half across the resistor right there of the 5 volts of the power supply and uh, we go over here and again it's going to be a little bit lower but still it's in a general range right there so this is a little less than half now we have a little more than half across the resistor but it's a higher value resistor so less current and thus the LED is blocking a little less voltage so in any case that's a good skill to have because as you can see there the uh, the amount of current makes a difference. So the circuit, each component affects other components in one way or another. So I'm going to get rid of the resistors altogether. So we covered that in detail in the last video. And uh, this video, we're going to look at with the multimeter, we don't have to go through all that fuss really. And so right now it's measuring continuity. I can turn the uh, power supply off. And this jumper doesn't go anywhere. It comes to a dead end here anyways. But it's beeping because there is practically zero ohms of resistance and uh, so it's letting us know that there is continuity it's a direct connection so we can hit select now it is in diode tester and so we're going to take the uh, red LED there LEDs are a type of diode and of course we have to connect in the proper direction red lead to the anode, long lead, short lead the cathode there you can see the LED light up because it is passive current and if you look at the voltage there, that was the voltage we had with the 3 kilo ohm resistor. So I'm guessing this is putting in probably about 1 milliamp of current, as we saw in the last video with uh, the uh, red LED. There was about 1 milliamp of current going through it with the uh, 3 kilo ohm resistor. And uh, just a tad bit more. And we had the 1.8 volt drop as we just saw earlier. So a green one again. So I'm guessing it'll be slightly less than 2.5. It's probably the same amount of current that the red one had. And there you go. So so it looks like when we test with this meter, it's like having a 3000 ohm resistor protecting. And actually it's probably the meter is given whatever voltage it needs to get one milliamp of current through there. So you can see this is 2.6 volts, even higher than the green LED. Yeah, but again, these blue ones are really bright too. So I have some consumer devices I used that uh, they really annoy me when they're charging at night because they have a blue LED to indicate they're charging. And if I can see it when I'm laying down, when the lights are out, it's uh, really bright. And uh, so there we go. This is a little bit more than the red LED. And doesn't look like these uh, yellow ones get... Uh, Looks like they're doing even worse in brightness than the red ones, or about equal. But uh, 
you got about the same forward voltage. That's the voltage it needs to conduct, and that's the voltage it takes away from the rest of the circuit in regards to what the power supply is providing. And uh, again, a white one here, that's uh, 2.6 volts. So I pulled these out of a uh, LED kit. I think the red one too. The red one might have came from different kits, but generally they're all about the same. But uh, I pulled them out of this kit. You can see we got uh, the colors there. I have it upside down. They also have a, uh, so some of them tell the current a 20 milliamp current. This is a different kit. They let you know they're intended to be used for uh, 20 milliamps. That's just general with these uh, little ones. And also, this one has the forward voltage on it, and they show a range right there, as does this kit here. So, as we saw, with a with a, about one milliamp per current with the red, these are three millimeter. Okay, all the ones in this kit are three millimeter. Five millimeter is uh, fairly common too, but I like the three millimeter on breadboards a lot. Five millimeters a little bit bigger, still reasonable on a board like this, but it kind of crowds things a little bit more. But in any case, there you can see the, the voltage. If we got up to 20 milliamps of current, their uh, maximum recommended current, we probably would have got closer to 2.2 volts. And that's why I assume that the meter is just set. We might as well turn this off. It's just set to give them one milliamp of uh, current and see what the voltage is across them. So as you increase current, the uh, voltage across them is going to go up. But I yanked them out of here. You can see they're all uh, coated. I like them better when they are coated like this. But like the white ones, they tend to all be clear. And uh, there's uh, flashing ones and stuff. These ones are all like pre-colored. I think they look a lot better. And then we got uh, these ones here. So these are frosted. They disperse the light a little bit better, but otherwise these are all clear, but they'll emit a light. And so if you're pointing them at something, they kind of light up something else uh, pretty good and uh, whatnot. So there's probably uh, uses where they're better than the uh, coated ones. But uh, in any case, they're all different colors once you put current through them. Otherwise they're clear and they all look the same. So in any case, that's really it for this video. It was mostly just intended to show how easy it is to find the forward voltage with a meter. And most of them can measure the diode. These are LEDs that can also measure rectifier diodes and stuff. It has a limit for Zener diodes. Zener diodes get into the dozens and then maybe some of them get into the hundreds of uh, volts. But uh, this probably only goes up to like 4 volts or something. And so you can't measure Zener diodes higher than that other than their forward voltage which is about 0.7 volts they're just like a regular diode with the forward voltage but their reverse voltage their zener voltage goes way up and so the meter will have limitations in that aspect but it's good for measuring leds and other uh, regular diodes so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video